Oh, yeah. Can you turn around a bit? That's it. Guys, come on, we gotta hurry. Why? Back in 1995, I'm about to make a huge mistake. Come on, let's go. Three perverts on a magical wheelchair, building out on the chicks of history. Typers, typers, typers. Bill Clinton, Larry Flint, and Pee Wee getting their kicks. They are the time perverts. Typers. Oh yeah, tonight's the night. I'm gonna finally score with that hot new intern, and nothing's gonna get in my way. Mr. President, the time pervs are here to see you. The who? The time pervs! Wherever there are kazangas, we'll be there! And wherever you can see a girl's butt crack when she bends over in her low-rise jeans, we'll be! Knock that off, Pee-wee! Look, I'm you from the future, and I came back in time to stop you from doing something real stupid. What? Never mind. Just hide in the closet while I take care of business. Hey there, Bubba. Oh, uh, hey, Monica. Look, I can't hang out with you right now. In fact, I don't think we should see each other anymore. Oh, that's too bad. Then I guess you won't get to see this. Whoa. Hot tamales. Ooh, extra chunky. Monica, for the sake of your country, you should put that dress back on. Oh, man, that should be me out there. That is you out there. Oh, come on, Bill. Can I just hang out and smoke your cigar? Oh, no, not the cigar. Uh, I remember that cigar. That is so sexy. What's so sexy about a cigar? Oh, uh, you'll see. Oh, Monica. Oh, yeah. Oh, Bill. Oh, yeah. Could you keep it down? I'm trying to perv out in here. Bill? What's going on in there? Oh, crap. It's Hillary. Hide. Where? In the closet. Oh, hey, Hillary. What's up? Bill, is that chunky little intern in here? I'm not chunky. Yes, oh, you, yes are. you are. No one's here, baby. Don't lie to me, Bill. Hillary, listen. I swear on the life of every single American citizen that I am completely alone in here. Ah! Oh, crap. I'm from the future. See ya. Ah! Ah! Wait for me! Oh, this is gonna suck. Yes, it worked. I stopped myself from cheating on my wife. But well, you did cheat on your wife. Yeah, but I didn't cheat on my wife. I did. Oh, this is great. I'm no longer gonna be known as the president who had an inappropriate relationship with an intern. Hey, man, what am I best known for? You balanced the budget for the first time in 30 years? Uh, oh, yeah. And you got oral sex from Monica Lewinsky while Larry Flint and Pee Wee Herman watched. Oh, that's not good. Well, at least I got some. <laughs> Mr. Vice President, I've got some bad news about your heart. You're screwed. You'll be dead within a month. Your only hope is a new technology called bionics. Soon, space age. What's it do? Perhaps I'd better let my colleague Oscar Goldman explain. Can you fix my heart? Yes, but why stop with the heart? Why not replace your game leg? Get rid of your hearing aid. Strengthen your hair follicles. The possibilities are endless. But we need six bazillion dollars. Six bazillion, huh? I think I can find six bazillion somewhere. Feels like about six bazillion. Dick Cheney, vice president. A man barely alive. Gentlemen, we can rebuild him. We have the technology. We have the capability to make the world's first six bazillion dollar vice president better than he was before. Stronger. Better. Faster. Nice job, sir. It's not as much fun without Cheney. I wish he'd get back from his unclothed location. Vice President Cheney reporting for duty. Dick, what happened to your hair? Uh, it's bionic. Up you go. <sighs> Holy moly. That was cool. I also have super hearing, supervision, and I can run as fast as a jaguar. Uh, the aminol or the luxury automobile? Oh. Mr. Vice President, 
With your enhanced skills, you could find Osama's hideout, smash the Al-Qaeda cells around the world, single-handedly end the war on terror. Uh, I wish I had time for that, but it's going to take all my bionic superpowers to keep George in line and get us re-elected. Dang, I want to be a bionic too. I see your point. Mine. <laughs> oh, that's right. This field's mine. Just like all of Iraq. Whatever's here, it's mine. Hey, I got something. Maybe it's a quarter. Uh, dang, Dick. I didn't get my quarter. I don't know if my bionic ticker can take four more years of this. Think big. With the largest sports utility vehicle ever, the new 2005 Dodge Environmental Holocaust. Screw the earth with 18 tons of road-splitting power. Inside, there's a DVD entertainment center for your kids, ice cream parlor, pony rides, and go-kart track. My turn! No! Mom! Don't make me come back there. Stop it! All right, then. Mom will love the mini shuttle that lets her conveniently resolve little family conflicts. That's okay. But this isn't just another family truck. Dad can fantasize he's still a real man. Because this SUV features a V12 Magnum stroke long shaft engine with large ball intake and massive red piston rods with swollen purple head gaskets. I'm tough. And the whole family will enjoy the innovative new gas dump button. Do it, Dad! Yeah! Okay. Go on. Dump some gas. Why? Because you can, America. Hello, America. I'm John Kerry, and when I'm not fiercely debating my political opponents, I'm shrouping the kill pow pow up in Tahoe. Shaka, brah. Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa. Hey, get out of my way. Whoa. Go, dude. Radical. That's right, I rip. I know it. I'm Kid Jibantek of Nar Nar Mountain. That's why I'm coming out with my new video game, John Kerry, Pro Snowboarder. In this hella sick new game, you can do all my raddest tricks, including backside turn, frontside turn, and stop. In my game, there isn't any shredding in the half pipe or jibbing in the park, but there are seven different levels of the most insane turning and stopping you ever saw. I'm capable of changing directions at any time. It's just like politics. So check out the game, bro. You'll be stoked you did. NBC has obtained amateur home video footage of the hockey squirrel jab. Oh, Diddy, I racked him in the scrum. Oh, man. Francois just yes in the scrum. I'm Secretary of Defense Donald Rumsfeld. I'm here to tell you about my new fragrance. Balls. If you're like me, you're sick of these airy f colognes. You want the muskiest musk imaginable. One that smells like a sweat that collects in a man's testicular region. Balls. Well, guess what? We bottled that gonad sweat smell, but we didn't stop there. We topped it off with a hint of taint. Balls. A lot of people think I've got balls. Well, I'll tell you something. I could bowl with these babies and get a strike every time. Well, now you can get your own balls. Balls. Come on. Don't you wish you had my balls? Get your balls at your nearest GOP cologne counter next to our other great fragrances, Dick, Bush, and Colin.
The following program contains material that isn't really offensive, except in what it implies about our cultural descent into a cesspool of intellectual feces. Celebrity butt cracks exposed, unexpurgated, up for discussion and under examination tonight on VH1's 87 Greatest Celebrity Butt Cracks. 87 great examples of celebrity ass cleavage talked about by the celebrities themselves. Only on VH1, where music used to be first, and now it's like fifth, or maybe twelfth. Leading the list, celebrity ass crack number 87, less than perfect star, Andy Dick. Wow, 87. I thought at least I'd be in the top 50. Sheesh, I guess my ass is sad. I remember when I had a 13-year-old ass. I saw it in, in one of those dressing room wall of mirror thingies at the department store. You know, the mirrors were all angled so I could really see my ass so well. Ass Crack 86, one of the stars of Celebrity Mole Hawaii, Kathy Griffin. Wow, I guess I was voted on this a while ago because, you know, I don't have an ass crack anymore. Seriously. See... I like the lowrider pants, but I just got so sick of not being able to bend over without some guy at a comedy club throwing peanut shells in my ass crack that I had it surgically sealed. Yeah, look. Watch out, Plastic Surgeons of America. Here comes a craze. Ass number 85. From Queer as Folk and most of these VH1 clip shows, Hal Sparks. You know, I don't know if I can take credit for this. Um, see, all the guys on Queer as Folk have ass doubles. But, you know, hey, on behalf of my ass double, Gregorio Garalupa Savanataras Mocandarazitas, I'm honored. Shocking as it may seem, we're going to go to a commercial. That's right, companies paid money to buy commercials on this program. Wow. Tonight, a shocking story from the world of sports. During last night's Stanley Cup semifinals, hockey athlete Pepe Jean-Luc Poulet was violently jabbed in the scrotal sack by opponent Didier Wee oui, Wee. Oui. Joining us tonight to discuss this is Bob Costas. Bob, what can be done about the shocking violence in sports? Well, Tom, this is a dark day for hockey and sports. If we can have the playback here again, right there. There's no call for that. Bob, will this adversely affect youth hockey league players who look up to these pros? If youngsters see this, they'll think this is how they should react in competition. Gratuitous display. Why, I remember as a boy going to baseball game. Look at Jatem Francois regurgitate. This just in. NBC Nightly News has attained amateur home video footage of the hockey scrotal jab. Him in the scrot. Oh man! Francois just yacked in the scrot. I'd like to see that alongside the actual broadcast footage. When will these shocking attacks end, Bob Costas? Well, I understand a congressional committee is being assembled to investigate a ban on. Damn, that puking kills me. NBC Sports, Bob Costas. Up next, video replays of sports violence and rock star nudie parts on network news programs. Where does news end and ratings begin? And what about the children? The following is a public service message from Samuel L. Jackson. Whoa, it's that dude from Pulp Fiction. That's right. It's the dude from Pulp Fiction. Except my name is Sam Jackson. Ass. And if you weren't such a dumbass whose brain is fried to a crisp, you know that. So put down the bong. You dig? Smoking pot is as dumb as casting me as a Jedi. I mean, come on. Star Wars is rad. <laughs> Go eat another bag of Cheetos, Munchy Von Head. Look at these two. Need I say any? More. Remember, Samuel L. Jackson says smoking pot is for heads. Don't even think about touching that f***ing remote. VH1 Illustrated is coming back. So does anyone foresee any other issues that we should address in this new Constitution of the United States? Hmm. Um, um, no, oh, oh, no, oh. Never... Yes, James Madison. Let's say at some point, man were to develop a form of non-physical communication. Non-physical? Yes, for argument's sake, perhaps a mailing system based on the ethers of Benjamin Franklin's new invention of electricity. Electrical mail? 
Yes, let's say electrical mail or e-mail for short. I foresee problems with this e-mail system. How do you mean? I can imagine certain people taking advantage of such a system by sending unsolicited emails to those who would rather not receive them. Perhaps they would solicit for things you don't even want. Like what? For example, pills designed to make your penis bigger. No, that's preposterous. Calm down, everyone. Now, surely we can all agree that if making your penis bigger is as easy as taking a pill, then everyone would want to know about this amazing offer. Ah, uh, 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 but I also theorize that these pills would not work. They would only be a scam designed to take the money from those who are insecure about the size of their tallywhacker. How would one go about making one's penis bigger? I don't know. Perhaps with rigorous stretching. I've tried various methods of stretching my penis, including hanging weights from it, and let me assure you, it does not work. Oh, yes, sir. Perhaps the weights weren't heavy enough. I hug two door stops from it. Forget it. I say the Constitution is pretty much done. Moving on to the next order of business. Who wants to be on the ten dollar bill? Ooh, I do. I do. I do. Ron Jeremy Living. Hey, and welcome to Ron Jeremy Living, the only show on TV for male porn stars. Oh, boy. Every time a flash goes off, my years paying the bills with magazine work causes me to orgasm, which leads us to today's topic. Life after porn! What is your name? Garth Platinum. Now, come on. You're going to need your real name in the real world. Daniel Rosenberg. Now, Danielle, when you get out of porn, chances are you'll want to start a relationship with someone special. Now, give it your best shot. Hi, I'm Daniel, and I came to deliver the wood. Freeze it. In the real world, you don't need to make up double entendres for the sex you're about to have. But then how will the home viewer know that I'm horny? There is no home viewer. Now, many ex-porn studs wonder if they should continue employing a fluffer after they quit porn. A fluffer is someone who keeps the male star up in between shooting. Drop by your company's human resource department and see how they feel about you being constantly filleted. I'm Ron Jeremy. I'll be back with more pearl necklaces of wisdom next time. Uh, 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 uh. Please, guys, no flash photography. So, have we covered absolutely everything in this new constitution of the United States? Mm -hmm. uh, here's something. What if, in the future, the ritual of courtship were to no longer take place at church socials and barn raisings, but rather by interconnecting through some sort of electronic web-like network? Interconnect through an electronic net? Let's say internet, for short. What are you getting at, James Madison? I think in the future, there will be substantial problems with this internet dating. I can imagine certain people misrepresenting themselves. Misrepresenting? I don't understand. For example, after introductory correspondences, I can only assume that when you finally meet your internet date in person, they would be much uglier than you imagined. That's not possible. How could that be? Surely you would have them send a painting of themselves before you met so that you knew you were attracted to them? Uh, uh, but we all know that even the ugliest person in the world has at least one good painting of themselves. Oh, yes, that is true. Well, uh, what would you think of me using this painting? Do you think it would help me entice the ladies of this internet? That's exactly what I'm talking about. Surely they will be disappointed when they finally meet him in person. Are you saying that Benjamin Franklin is ugly? No, I just don't think it's an accurate depiction of how he really looks. He thinks I'm the ugliest person in the world. <laughs> oh, Mr. Madison. Sure, he's no Alexander <laughs> Hamilton. But I think Ben Franklin has a lot to offer. He has a keen intellect, a delightful sense of humor, and he drives a very expensive horse-drawn wagon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, 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 yeah. Let's put it to a vote. 
All those who think Benjamin Franklin is a hottie, say I. I. All those who just want to put other people down because they're insecure about their own looks, say nay. Wait a minute, I never- The eyes have it. Benjamin Franklin is a stud muffin. Next order of business. What kind of bird should we use for our national symbol? I say penguin. 